So hello and uh, welcome everyone and welcome back to those of you who joined us yesterday and for those of you who are joining us today for the first time. Um, good afternoon and uh, good evening to anyone who is joining from the overseas. Uh, today uh, our talk is on a very, very interesting topic, which is how to balance um, remote work and kids. And our guest today will lead us uh, through this talk. He's a professional and personal coach. He's an instructor at uh, McGill School of Continuing Studies. And he's also uh, teaching a lot of personal development uh, workshops and seminars for McGill employees as well. So please welcome Mr. Robert Weiss. Thank you, Mina. So thank you everybody for joining today's topic. It is a big topic that's been coming up, is how do I manage working at home and having kids? So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through today some strategies, some ways to, to help you with that. Um, I'd like you to please be free to ask questions throughout the presentation. If I can answer them at the, um, at the time, I will, or I'll wait till a little bit later, but please feel free to answer questions as you think of them. So I'll go into the presentation on how do you cope with the double duty of managing work and kids. So the spread of the coronavirus is now forcing us to be at home and that means working at home with kids. So how do you struggle to stay productive? So how do you, excuse me, how do you stay productive when there's all these challenges from working from home. So today we're gonna master working from home while under the quarantine with the children. So let's try to master that. And these are some great strategies. If you have any questions about any of them, please feel free to let me know. So I'll start this presentation very briefly with co-parenting. So there might be people online who are single, they're not with a, a co-parent. So do not worry, we're only gonna go briefly on co-parenting strategies. Everything else is basically things you can do on your own. Okay, so if you are co-parenting, if you are um, with both parents at home, take advantage of the different energy levels of each parent. One parent is maybe more of a morning person and the other is a night person. So take that into account when assigning tasks. Maybe the morning person can deal with getting everyone up and ready for the day while the night person handles bedtime. So what you wanna do here is strategize with your partner. What can you do and what can I do to make things easier and more efficient for us when we are trying to work from home with kids? Communication is key. Have a clear plan for who is supposed to do what chore and what happens when you're effectively communicating is you are going to reduce the chances of conflict. So you wanna make sure that you are effectively communicating with your partner, be explicit. What is expected of me? What is expected of you? And we also want to make sure that we're being fair. So looking at a win-win situation, well, I could do this, perhaps you can do this. But be very explicit. Don't assume the person is going to know what you want them to do. I see a lot of people saying things like, well, I'm taking out the trash every morning. It's pretty obvious to do this. Not necessarily. So you want to be explicit in your communication. What is expected of me? and what is expected of you. Now I talked briefly uh, yesterday about mind traps. I'll talk again briefly about mind traps uh, very quickly in this slide. You wanna make sure that you are not mind reading. Um, when we assume what the other person is going to do or what the other person is thinking, we are, we are acting like we could get into their head and we know what they think and what they know. That's why it's important to be explicit with your communication because just because you think it's obvious doesn't mean they know. So you want communication to be impeccable. Impeccable is clarity. And if you're not sure about something, ask. So you wanna share these parenting duties. It's often, it's often easier to divide and conquer chores. So what can you do? What can I do? Divide and conquer. And some chores, they don't even need to be done. So make sure that, some, that, that the chores that you might be worried about actually need to be done at this time. There are some things that you may need to just let go and put on pause for now. 
Remember, these are unusual circumstances, which means we got to be flexible in terms of what our expectations are. So if it's a big hassle to get your kids to make their beds, consider maybe dropping that. If it's a big hassle for you to, um, you know, take out the, the trash every, you know, take out the trash or do everything every day, maybe you want to adjust that to every second day, depending on what is priority and what needs to be done. Adjust. Again, it's going to come back to being flexible. You want to make sure that you are being flexible during these times, which means letting things you know, move in a different way than you would prefer, but allowing yourself to be flexible so you don't put all that pressure that everything needs to be done because these are challenging different situations that we cannot expect for everything to go the exact same way as planned. So this is actually, for your mindset, this is actually a really good idea. Rearrange your space. Your home wasn't designed for full-time occupation for work and school. Gonna move this here. So could you change maybe the dining room into a silent workspace for anyone who's doing quiet work? Can you clear out a room temporarily to give them space to play your kids? So what you might want to do is change your space a little bit. Create space, create workspace. Also, it will help you with your mindset because your brain associates things with space. So a bed is associated with sleep. A kitchen table is associated with eating. So maybe you want to adjust your space so you associate it more with work. And this way, your kids will also associate the space with you working. And also, if you maybe create some space for your child, um, for them to play, they'll associate that space with, okay, this is my quiet time to play in this space. So rearrange your space to be more conducive for work and school. This is key, again, it's gonna go back to communication. Communicate a family plan. With a house of kids and working parents, it's important to be realistic about your working situation. And that means taking time to explain what's happening. Be communicative and set boundaries. So you wanna be very clear, very, very clear. So you wanna set clear, communicative um, family plan of this is the situation, this is what we're planning on doing, this is how the morning is gonna look, this is how my day is gonna look. You wanna be very clear with the family plan and you want to set boundaries. Boundaries is a very key component when you're working at home to make sure that your boundaries are clear. Being transparent about your schedule can make it easier for children to understand when you are off limits. There are gonna be moments and times when they cannot be disturbing you. You need to set that, um, that communicative to be clear. During this time, I need quiet. During this time, I'm on, on an important phone call. This is important for everyone's mental health and for everyone's well-being. You want to stick to a routine. Maintaining a daily routine will help everyone stay occupied and manage some of the anxiety caused by this change. So what you want to make sure is that we follow a structure. So you could be flexible, but you also have to have some guidelines, some structure, because this will actually help people feel more mentally stable. So a shower in the morning. We have our shower in the morning, our breakfast at, let's say, 9 a.m. We're going to do this at this time. So you want to make sure that you're building some structure, maybe taking a walk at this time. So there's some sort of normalcy to the day. Create a schedule. Line up your day carefully with set office hours. How many hours do you hope to work that day? When will you return calls? What can you accomplish while your child is preoccupied doing something on their own? Get your focus priorities done first. Prioritize your own workday and make sure you get to anything that requires time and focus first. So for this, I would suggest that you write a priority list. What would that mean? It would mean you take a list and you would prioritize, and I would scale it on one to 10 in terms of importance. What do I need to work on first? So you want to set priorities. What we do is we start to overwhelm ourselves. Oh my goodness, I have this to do, this to do, that to do, that to do, that to do, that to do. So to help with anxiety and stress, the best thing to do is to write it down. Make a checklist. This is a very key component that will help you with anxiety and stress. Make, um, make a checklist. because Just because you're thinking something might be important, it may not be as important as you think, and it may be able to wait maybe a day or two. So prioritize your schedule, your list of what do I need to do. 
And if you need to scale it to help you, just scale it between one and 10, how urgent is this in importance? You wanna make sure that you are setting realistic expectations. Productivity doesn't necessarily equal eight hours. Make sure that you are setting realistic expectations for your day. We think that just because we're working this many hours, we're productive during this many hours, not necessarily. It's actually quality versus quantity. So really find the times and the moments where you can be most productive. Maybe you can get a lot more done during this time than that time, even though it's in a shorter period of time. And here are some great strategies when you have children. Capitalize on, on nap time or quiet times. Whether your child sleeps for one hour or three, use this time to finish assignments that require your complete focus and concentration. Let kids make some choices. Giving children the ability to choose some of their own activities and self-serve meals and snacks help build independence. You don't need to feel like you need to do it all. I think one of the biggest um, concerns that I see with clients that, that are feeling very overwhelmed is they feel they need to do it all. They need to make all the meals. They need to set the whole, whole schedule. They need to prepare activities. You can give some of these, um, some of these choices to your children. You can ask them, what would you like for lunch? Do you want to make it? Let them make it. Let them make their sandwich. Let them prepare their meal. So you want to give them some choices also. So not only are you helping them, you're helping yourself to relieve all that pressure, all those feelings of being overwhelmed. Allow them to make some choices. Allow yourself, allow yourself to take some of your responsibilities off your shoulders. Because if you're starting to feel overwhelmed and anxious and stressed, it's not going to be good for you or anybody. Like I spoke about yesterday in our presentation, our behaviors, our actions are contagious. If we're feeling anxious and stressed, the people around us are going to feel it. If you're feeling overwhelmed and anxious, your children are going to feel it. Your partner is going to feel it. Your colleagues are going to feel it. So you want to make sure that you are taking time to make healthy decisions and healthy choices and making sure that you are allowing yourself freedom to ask for help. Ask your child what, what do you think about making this sandwich? What do you think about doing this? What would you like to do today? How would you like to spend some time? Rather than you constantly thinking, what do I need to do? How do I help them? What do I need to prepare? And, you know, this is a very big one. Keep kids entertained. Try setting up an activity center in your home office so kids feel that they have their own designated place to do projects while you catch up on emails. So you want to give them their own space. Remember what we want to do is we want to be flexible. We want, to, we want to be able to create space. So you have your workspace, give them a space. Remember, this is great for association. They need to know they have their own space and you have your own space. I just see that we have a question. I try to practice lazy parenting as much as I can and not stress out my kid's toddler too much when it is really unnecessary. What do you think about RIE parenting, Janet Lansbury's approach under current circumstances? It is extremely challenging to maintain a functional routine these days. I have a problem reinforcing boundaries and rules with my kids because it means a tantrum, unless it is something dangerous, I won't say no most of the time. I don't think he even understands no matter how clear my instructions to him are because he is too young. So it's really challenging to maintain functional routines. I have problems reinforcing boundaries and rules. Okay, this, this is a very um, important um, concern that I see here. Now, number one, what I see here is it says I have, you, you have trouble, um, you know, maintaining a functional routine these days. That, that's okay. So it's, it's okay. And I, and I think that what we need to do is we need to give ourselves permission. These are very challenging times and it is going to be challenging. But I think that Let's not look at this black or white or all or nothing. Let's look at it as, okay, I have trouble sticking to a routine, but what am I good? What kind of things are important? What are the things that I want to, what I, where can I be flexible in my routine? I want to make sure I'm exercising 10 minutes every day. Maybe I can't do it at 1 p.m., but maybe I can move that to like 3 p.m. So you want to be flexible in your routine and you want to make sure that you are not 
um, hard on yourself if you can't do something at the time that you said you want to do it. Does it mean that you are having trouble with routine? It just means that these are un, um, you know, unusual circumstances and things need to be flexible. But just because you're having trouble with it doesn't mean you're not good at it. And I try to practice lazy parenting as much as I can to not, mess, to not stress kids out. I, you know, I understand the concept of lazy parenting and I, I get the, the terminology. Uh, you don't want to stress your kid out, so you don't want to put too much pressure or too much demand or too much um, on the child. I still think it's important to try as best you can to practice boundaries. If you are struggling with boundaries with your child, well, look at, well, what can I do? How can I implement this boundary? What do I need to do? What is my struggle with boundaries? Where am I not able to be effective? Now, we could shape people's behavior. So boundaries absolutely work, okay? You need to be able to instill boundaries. Boundaries work. People are shapeable. And the way you shape people is through positive and negative reinforcement. So you absolutely want to stick to trying to create boundaries. It's, it's possible you're struggling with the boundaries, but I would ask you to look at, well, what ways can I implement these boundaries? What can I, how could I improve on these boundaries? Do I need to instill a consequence? What kind of consequence? Now, I understand that you're dealing with a toddler, so it's not the same thing. But anybody who's struggling with boundaries, boundaries work. I want to be very clear. Boundaries absolutely work. People are shapeable. They're adaptable. They're adjustable. You want to have boundaries. Perfect. Okay. Let's go to, what's my next, where's my next? Okay, so this is something that I have seen and I think it's a fantastic, fantastic idea. Digital play dates and FaceTime parties. A key part of school is recess and lunchtime and interacting with other children. Perhaps arrange a meetup with their friends online and you can get work done at the same time. So maybe you wanna do a Facebook party or a Zoom party. I think this is great for the kids' mental health and also a great opportunity for you to get work done while they're socializing. This is actually one of my favorite ideas because I think it's, it, it builds, first of all, the kids' connection that they much need. And also it's a healthy way for them to be distracted and a great way for you to get work done. So you may wanna try this one, digital play dates and FaceTime parties. And I actually wanted to, I think this is a good time to, I have a poll question, I, I will, Pull up the poll, and let's see. Right, so here is my poll question. What has been your biggest remote work challenge? So I'm just curious to get your feedback on what has been your biggest challenge while working at home with kids. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let's see. So the results look like still waiting for a few more people, but it looks like we're tied. Looks like we have a tie here in this poll. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to share uh, okay, so I'm going to share the results. So it's managing time, share results. Okay, so it's, it's, I don't know if you received it, I'm trying to share the results, but the, the two uh, ones that are tied are managing time and interruptions. Well, perfect timing, because I'm going to actually teach you how to prepare for interruptions. And managing time we're gonna go in more detail um, in tomorrow's workshop, but managing time really is, at this point, being flexible, being realistic, and being as much as possible on a routine and a schedule. So managing time is a key component, but because of the unusual circumstances, people are gonna struggle managing their time because things are very different right now but we're gonna go in more detail on, on effective ways to manage time in tomorrow's workshop.
but we're right on key for how to um, how to prepare for interruptions. Yeah. Like, how ironic is that? My next slide, and I and there we go. It's interesting. Okay, so plan for interruptions, which was one of the um, key um, struggles that you that the audience is having. Um, let's go through some strategies to prepare for interruptions, which are inevitable. So you want to give your child a nonverbal do not disturb when you need quiet time. Perhaps you can wear a cap when you're on the phone to signify that kids are not allowed to make noise or interrupt unless there is an emergency. So I actually, this is actually a true story. I have a client of mine. She works at home. She's a CEO of her company and she's on some really, really important phone calls. So what she does is she actually wears, this is a true story, she wears a tiara on her head, which means mommy is busy on a very important uh, conversation with the king. That's what she tells me. So that, and it works. So when they see mommy wearing a tiara, they're like, okay, don't bother mommy. She's on the phone with an important person. So I would look for what works for you. What can you do non-verbally to signal to your child, I'm on an important phone call. Well, what can you do? So you want to give them some nonverbal cue. It could be a cap. It could be a tiara. It could be anything. It could be a red t-shirt. Whatever you can think of to signify, I'm on a phone call. Please do not disturb me at this time. It's an important call I'm on. Plan for interruptions. If you have an office door, tie a red ribbon on it when you're not to be disturbed. I think that we need to plan for the fact that interruptions are obviously inevitable, but there are things we can do to prepare for them. I think putting a red ribbon on and do not disturb, a symbol to say I'm busy right now is key. <clears throat> and we're all in this together. This is very important. So you want to communicate with your coworkers. Even if the best laid plans, your children can interrupt your work, let your colleagues know. So when you get onto a phone call with a colleague, I would be very transparent. You would say to them, I just want to let you know my child is around. They're just, they may be waking up from a nap. They may be, their, their program might be over and they may disrupt. They may knock on my door. They may um, cry. Let your teammates know. I mean, these are unusual circumstances. We're all in this together. Rather than be worried or scared or keep pressing the mute button, be transparent. Say, you know what, I'm working from, as you know, I'm working from home and there could be an interruption. I like this quote that I put here. I'm blocking it for myself. I'm just going to move my thing. We are not a team because we work together. We are a team because we respect, trust, and care for each other. Communicate with your coworkers. You don't need to withhold information from them. You don't need to tell them everything is okay when there is a struggle. You want to be communicative. Very important, and I hope that the common theme here also in this workshop is we want clear communication with our partners, with our children, and with our coworkers. Communication, effective communication is key. Key, key, key. And here is an important, um, an important thought. We need to be gentle with our kids and with yourself. This is new situations for you and your kids. They're also struggling. They can't see their, their friends. They're not going to school. They're not socializing. As difficult as, uh, as difficult as it is for you, it's also difficult for them. So we might look at kids as, oh, they're going to be noisy. They're going to interrupt me. Oh, like, how am I going to get all this done and have my kids here? But they're also struggling too. This is new for them also. So we have to have empathy for our kids as well and empathy for ourselves. This is new for us and for them. I love this quote. You are not working from home. You are at your home during a crisis trying to work. So going back to the person who, um, who wrote me the question before, it's, it's, it's going to be challenging. These are not planned times. So sticking to a schedule, sticking to a routine, it's going to take flexibility and being able to adjust. It is not a normal circumstance that we are. So give yourself some empathy, give yourself some compassion, give your children empathy, give yourself compassion, give your coworkers empathy and compassion. We, like this quote says, 
we are doing this because it's a crisis time. It's an unusual situation and it's affecting everybody. We are not alone on this. One of the key, key components that I think that a lot of people don't think about, which is interesting, is practicing self-care. So here you are, you're, you're working, you're taking care of kids, you're doing double duty. Where is the time for you to take care of yourself? So let's look at this. This is actually a very, very important concept here. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the concept empty pockets. So I'm going to uh, explain it to you. Oh, I have a question. Okay, remember, I'm just gonna remember empty pockets to share that thought with you. Okay, and the question, I think a lot of parents are feeling guilty because they are working from home and they just have to let their kids watch TV all day long. Perfect. Um, um, that's a great question. And I, I, so I, I like this question. Okay, so where are my hesitance is, is I, I don't think, um, I, think I, I, I think that we, we need to balance um, the way we manage working at home with our kids. I think that kids watching excessive TV is not healthy for them. So I think that we need to still find the balance. And I understand people feel guilty when their kids are being put in front of a television and told to watch movies and TV shows all day. I think that we need to still, that's why I'm gonna suggest that we do things that promote healthy behaviors for children and not put them in front of a television all day. Not to feel guilty for doing it, but I think that there are healthier ways to do things during the day than having your kids watch television. So rather than feeling guilty about it, let's find a solution for it. I think that screen time needs to be limited. I actually do because by limiting screen time, you're making screen time more interesting for the kid. That's good for you because if screen time is more interesting to them and more desirable to them, it means that you can get more done while they're watching. Think about it like this. If you keep giving chocolate all day, it's not as exciting as if you give chocolate once. So I would limit screen time and I would actually use that time when they watch TV or watch a movie to really be productive because they're going to not, they're really going to be into whatever they're watching. They're not going to keep getting up and bothering you or, or making noise because they're going to be so invested in the fact that this is a luxury. So I think we need to find the balance between having your kids watch a TV all day and finding solutions for them to be able to maybe watch TV, read a book. Um, maybe they could do a social uh, Skype or Zoom, like I spoke about before. Maybe they could do an activity book. Maybe there's up, play a game, do a puzzle. We need to find other ways for them to be entertained than watching TV. I wouldn't feel guilty about it. I mean, I know this is really a hard time. I wouldn't feel guilty about having your kids watch TV all day if that's really the only thing that you feel it will help to, to distract them. But I do think that feeling guilty is a waste of time. Let's find a solution than feeling guilty about something. And if you're feeling guilty about your kids watching TV all day, find something else for them to do during the day and just watch TV. Perfect. Okay, so I wanna just talk about the empty pockets part of this presentation, which is really important, is that we need to make sure that our pockets, metaphorically speaking, are full. What does that mean? It means that if you're, if you're, depleted, if you're giving everything to work, everything to kids, everything to your relationship, well then what are you giving to yourself? So let's look at pockets as money, pockets of money. Okay, so you have these pockets, okay? You have these pockets and they're empty. And somebody says to you, I need you to please help me. I can't afford my rent. Because your pockets are empty, you are not in a position to help this person with their rent because your pockets are empty, which means you're not in a position to give. And if you are to give, you are going to deplete yourself because you are taking from empty pockets. So actually, what you want to do is be in a position to give. You want to fill your pockets. And how do you fill those pockets so you're actually in a position to give more? Is to practice self-care. So self-care is not selfish. It's actually helping you to be able and be in a position to help other people. So I'm going to encourage you to practice self-care on a daily basis. It's like recharging your batteries. Filling your pockets is like being able to replenish yourself so you're in a position to give. Do something that energizes your body every day. Maybe take a long walk, a little jog, 
What can you do to just energize yourself? Take a warm bath. Practice stretching every morning or every afternoon. Take five minutes to decompress every day. I'm a very big believer in practicing mindful meditation. I, my, I do my mindfulness and gratitude journals on a daily basis. It helps me feel better. It helps me reconnect with myself. It helps me appreciate what I have. It helps me really be in a better position to help and give people. So I would highly recommend that you practice self-care on a daily basis. And it's important that we keep a sense of humor. I mean, these are definitely strange times. I know it's easier said than done, but try to look for the funny or absurd moments in it all, because there's humor in every scary, unpredictable situation. So let's find humor. And laughing is a key component to feeling better and more mentally healthy. So you can find humor in your child, um, sitting on your desk, you know, um, organizing your papers. Yes, it might be like, what are you doing? You're, you're on my desk. I, where are my papers? But you could also find the humor in all of this as well. We have to be able to look at this from a different mindset, a different perspective. If we're going to look at this all as overwhelmed, stressed, how could this happen? What can I do? Then we're going to feel bad about it. Let's try to find the humor in it because there are still things to laugh about. There's still funny things about this whole serious crisis, but there's still some things that we can laugh about um, and we need to. We need to be able to laugh and find humor in the things that are going on for our own mental well-being and our own mental health. So I'd like to take more questions. Um, we have 15 minutes, but I just want to wrap up with a little bit of planning, lots of discussion and an adaptable attitude you'll be able to better manage your COVID-19 stint at home with your kids. So it's all going to come down to your mindset and your attitude. Does anybody have any questions? And it could be working at home with kids. It could be anxiety related. It could be conflict. It could be anything. Feel free to ask any questions. And if there are no questions, then I will do an activity with you. Uh, we have a question. Perfect. Even though these are extremely challenging times, there are positive aspects too that help build a strong relationship with our kids. The amount of time we spend together is beneficial for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, this is a very interesting time. This is a time that we are actually encouraged to stay home, um, spend time with your kids, spend time with yourself. So there's a lot just in that aspect to be grateful for. And on that note, I would also encourage that you and your child keep a gratitude journal. I think this is also really something that would be very beneficial to you and your child is what am I grateful for about this situation? I think that people don't see that there is some positive, um, there are some positive things that are coming out of this. So let's focus on some of the positives. So what am I grateful for? I get to spend more time with my kids. I get to spend more time, you know, learning about myself. I get to, to learn more about my child. I get to learn more about my strengths. I get to learn more about my ability to be resilient. So there's a lot of um, things that we're, we're going to learn about ourselves that we, that we might forget after this is over. So it's a great time to take that time to appreciate and find gratitude for what have I learned during this time about myself that makes me feel good that I'm grateful for. How much active, oh, excuse me, how much active homeschooling time should I be spending with my child? My issue is figuring out how much one-on-one -on -one time I should be spending with my eight-year-old while still working. Okay, so this is a great question. Um, I'm gonna, you, you, okay, this is a great question. So the, the what I like to suggest in this question, the one thing I notice is that you use the word should. And um, in, a, some of, in my first presentation, I, uh, the word should is actually a mind trapped word. It's a, it's a way to scold. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. So I would encourage you to change that word to how much time do I need and would like to, be, to spend time. So let's take out the pressure and that 
that feeling like, oh, I should be doing more, I should be spending this much time, and let's find a solution that's, that's more um, flexible, more solution focused, more um, collaborative than the word should. So my suggestion here is asking yourself or your child, what needs to be done? What do I need to cover? What do we need to learn? So let's not put a, a time on it. I think time again is putting a judgment. Well, I need to spend five hours or I should be spending five hours, but why do you need to spend five hours? Maybe this is something that you can do in a shorter period of time. So before I would put any, and I wouldn't put any pressure on the amount of time. I would be more curious about what, what would you like to get done per day? And what do you believe needs to be done? What needs to be taught? So not what should be taught, what should be done, well, how much time I should be spending. Let's focus on what needs to be done, ideally what can be done, and what would be the ideal amount of time to cover what needs to be done. So let's look at it more as a proactive way than a, well, I should, maybe I should be spending four hours. Susie's spending four hours with her kid. Maybe I should be spending four hours on my kid. Let's take away the judgment because that doesn't help us, that doesn't serve us, and let's find the solution. So let's take out judgment, let's take out how many hours Let's take all that out and let's just focus on what needs to be done and how long can that take to do it. Let's find a solution. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Keep. If you have any more questions or you are not sure about something, please let me know. So I have an activity. Um, actually, if I could bring Ina back to the screen, it would be great. Okay, Ina, I'm gonna. I, I didn't. This is not planned. But I would like to do an activity with you, Ina. Are you good with that? Absolutely. Okay, this is not planned, but I, I think this will be very beneficial. Ina, I'm going to ask you to focus. Now, this, this would be, of course, this would be easier if we were in person, but I hope that I can still get the point across even virtually. So, Ina, I'm going to ask you, okay, it's, it's not going to be as effective. I'll ask you, could you do me a favor? Could you focus on everything in your office that's blue? So can you take a moment and focus on everything in your office that's the color blue? In my current office? In the office you're in right now, right now. You're good? Yeah. Okay, so you focus on everything in your office that's blue? Okay, great. So Ina, now please close your eyes. And can you please tell us everything in your office that's black? There are just a couple of black frames and a couple of black um, souvenirs. There is like an African souvenir, a statuette that I have from Africa that is black. Okay. So there are a couple of with them. black covers. Okay, so you, I, I want to ask you, would it have been easier for you to answer everything in the room that's blue than, ask, than answer everything in the room that's black? Yes, probably. Why is that? Well, I guess because I focused my attention on what was blue. Exactly. Rather than right. Black. Yeah. right. So this is a very powerful exercise that I do with my clients is that what I asked Ina to do was focus on everything in the room that's blue. Now, in many cases, I'm not in front of Ina. There might have been a black pen. I'm not saying there is, but there might have been a black pen right in front of Ina's desk, right in front of her, that she may not have seen because she was focused on everything in the room that's blue. So the reason I asked Ina to focus on everything in blue and then ask her what's black is to show the power of our focus. If we're going to focus on everything that's going wrong, we're going to see that more than we're going to focus on what's going right. So I asked Ina to do this because I wanted to show you how powerful our focus is. If we're going to focus on the blue, and let's say the blue is negative, okay, then we're going to see the blue. And let's say the black is positive, but we're not going to see it as much. So we have to be very mindful, especially during these times, where are we putting our focus and how are we using our focus? So you want to be very mindful. Am I using my focus to see what's going good or am I using my focus to see what's going wrong and what's going bad? So as Ina demonstrated, yeah, I could see the black, but I really wasn't focused on it. So I focused more on the blue. So I want you to be very mindful of where you're putting your focus and how you're using your energy, because that's, gonna, that's going to determine how you feel 
and how you react to situations. Does that make sense? Very much so. I think we have one more question. Yes. Okay. I'm a parent of two kids and I'm confused and a bit anxious. I, if I should or shouldn't let my kids go to school in two weeks when the school will start, there are many pros and cons. This is a great question. Okay. A great question with, the, with two shoulds in it, a shoulds and a shouldn'ts. Um, I, think, I think what we need to do, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, is I really think what we need to do is we need to not base, make decisions based on fear. So fear is very strong, especially right now. I think that fear is at its all-time high. And I would ask you, um, Aurora, I would ask you if it's fear that's driving the car. Is fear the hesitant between letting your kids go to school or not letting your kids go to school. We don't want fear to drive our car. And I will be very honest with you. I think this is the most truthful advice I can give anybody here is that we don't want to make decisions or choices out of fear. If you're scared, that's not necessarily a reason not to do something. Now, I understand people can say to me, well, the threat is real. Well, like I said yesterday in yesterday's presentation, there's a lot of threats that are real. There are school shootings that could happen. There are kidnappings. There are car accidents. I mean, there's a million threats. There's viruses. There's flus. There's a million threats out there. This happened to be the threat that people are focusing on right now. So we're using this one to be scared of. But if it's fear, I will tell you from my own mental health perspective, I will never let fear run my car. So if it's fear that's running your car, you may want to challenge that fear. And the best advice I can give you is fear has two meanings. Forget everything and run or face everything and rise. So let's, let's make sure that we're not making fear-based decisions. I know people may not agree with me and I completely understand and I respect everybody's opinion and everybody's values. I am just speaking towards my own feelings on fear and not allowing fear to run a car regardless no matter what it's not just corona it's, it's not it's any any fear i wouldn't let fear run a car there's pros and cons for everything there's pros i don't let, i used to have an elevator phobia there's pros and cons for going into an elevator there's pros and cons for everything but ultimately if it's fear driving my car i need to turn it the other way that's my that's my philosophy on on that okay So this was, I, this was a, I, I really, you, these are great questions and I, I'm really grateful for everybody who came today to learn about how to manage working at home, how to take care of their mental health. I have one more poll question that I would like to share with you all. Oh, poll, polls. Um, Actually, Ina, I don't know how to get to that next poll question. I might need your help. Yeah, I will do that. Okay, I'm going to need your help. I don't know how to get to the poll number two question, please. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Ina. What would I do without Ina? Okay. So, yes, if you could name one key takeaway from today's session that you will strive to apply, whether it's setting boundaries, practicing self-care, um, sticking to a routine, planning for interruptions, or creating a schedule. I also almost put as a choice virtual play dates because I think that's a good one. The virtual play dates, I like that one. I guess it would depend on the age of the child. I was yeah, I was thinking this is more geared though to yes, this is to geared to like, yeah, children, but there's also toddlers and. Although I guess some toddlers are getting quite proficient with their iPads recently. Yes, I see that. I saw yes, the research is showing that so. So please take in mind the virtual play date idea. It's a good one. I really think it's a good one. It was, when I was doing my research, I'm like, oh, I like that one. Okay. So we have almost, about 80%, 81% of people. Wow, answered. really ties. Okay, so sticking to I'm our... going to share the results right now. Yeah, great. Okay, so we have a tie. Sticking to a routine, planning for interruptions, creating a schedule, wonderful. Wonderful. I, I want to thank you. This was actually really a pleasure to, to do this with you, with all of you today. It was really a pleasure. Uh, tomorrow we are going to, we're going to be back for some more. I feel like this is like a series, Ina. 
Yes. This feels like a, like a, like a webinar series. Um, so we'll be back tomorrow with um, some more tools, more strategies. Bring your questions. They're really helpful. They're really beneficial. It makes the presentation more interactive, which I really enjoy. Um, you're going to have access to the slides, so please, um, um, please go back to them. There's some really valuable tips that I think that will be really helpful. Um, I want to thank you. Here's my contact information um, for anybody who wants to reach me. Anybody who has any more questions, they can absolutely contact me. Um, you can call me and I actually, my next time I'll put an email address, you can email me as well. And I know that, Ina, you added a slide as well for our upcoming webinars. Yes, indeed. You can always check the schedule on our website for upcoming webinars and uh, Robert will be joining us tomorrow as well. What is our topic tomorrow, Robert? I think it's managing time. Is it? Exactly. It's managing it? okay, your I was, time. I was the, title, the exact title. I, was to try the, I knew what the concept was. I wasn't sure the exact title of it. Right. So tomorrow we'll be talking about managing your time. For today, I would like to thank everyone for joining. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to send them to either uh, the email that you received the invitation from, from the school, or to Robert directly. And we do hope to see you tomorrow. I do hope you will be implementing some of the strategies that we shared today. I know for sure I loved one. I think I'm going to go and order a tiara for myself somewhere oh, yes. on Amazon yes. because that, yes. that, that one I think every woman who listened today would like. <laughs> That was based on a true story. That was a true yes. story. Yes. I, I would like to test this one and see how it works and I'll let you know. Oh, we have a question. We have a question. Okay. Um, I'll wear it tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I don't know if Amazon can deliver this fast though, but I will see what I can find. Perfect. Yes, that was. A, that, I love that one when my client told me about that. I'm like, yeah, that's, I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna implement that one too. Yeah, there's a lot of good strategies and a lot of good ways to deliver nonverbal cues to do not disturb. So happy that was helpful to you. And, I, and if you could get a, if you can get a tiara tomorrow, um, fast delivery, Ina, you'll wear that. All right. Okay, Robert. Thank you so much for today, and uh, we will be online tomorrow at the same time. See you all tomorrow. Thank bye bye. You. Bye.